In this video, I'm gonna help you get started editing with DaVinci Resolve for iPad. And you know I hate long intros, so let's just jump into this tutorial. Now the first thing we wanna do inside DaVinci Resolve is go to the bottom right section and click on this home icon. And that is gonna allow us to create a new project and also look at previous projects that we've created. So we're just gonna click new project, give it a title here, and then click create and then we are back on this main screen. Now to add footage to our project, all we have to do is scroll up to this button here and we can either import media from our files app or we can import from our photos, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select the video clips that I wanna add in and then I can click the add button. And there we go, I have the videos added. If I really wanted to organize these, I could hold my finger down and be able to create a bin. I could have different little files and organization. I'm not like that. I'm just gonna leave it as is and we'll go from there. To add video clips to our timeline, all we have to do is hold down on the clip and just drag and drop it into our timeline. And now we have the video added. Now, before we add the rest of our clips to our project here, we do need to talk about how this timeline works because it's completely different from any other editor I've seen. Now with most editors, you're usually can just take your finger and scroll through the timeline and pinch to zoom in and pinch to zoom out. But that's not how this works. If you try to do this, it'll just make these square boxes to select different items. The only way you can really move through the timeline is two different ways. Now the first way to move through your timeline is just to grab this here and then you're able to just scroll through with this bar. So you can get right to where you want to make an edit and be able to do so. The other way is you can technically grab right here where there's these little measurement kind of lines. If you grab there with your finger, you can scroll through that way. Um, it's just a little bit harder to do because it's a very thin line there, but it is still kind of doable. The other thing is you cannot pinch to make your timeline bigger. If you try to pinch, it's gonna do absolutely nothing. And so your, your project's always gonna be zoomed in like this. Uh, so you can drag to kind of look at the project. If you do need more space, you can grab this here on this side, which is like the little sandwich. You can drag that up so you can see a bit more of your timeline, but it's always gonna be zoomed in like that, which is kind of a pain in the butt because if we wanna add more footage like we're trying to do, I have to scroll to the end and then I can grab my next clip that I wanna add and then I have to scroll all the way over again and then I can add the next clip I wanna add and so forth. So it's like constant scrolling versus with a regular editor, you just pinch to zoom out, drop, 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 and all my clips are in. But now with some video clips added to my timeline, let's get into the basics of how we can trim our video clips. So with DaVinci Resolve, you have your main video track here, and then in this blue section, you'll actually see the audio wavelengths for when you start talking. So that's how I like to trim my clips. So I'll go ahead and scroll ahead in the video to the point where I can see all the audio bumps appear. All right, so I found the spot where I want my video to begin, which is right here. And so all I have to do is just scroll over to that spot in order to make a trim. Now, what's also cool is you can actually hear the audio as you're scrolling. Listen to this. So I can actually hear right when I'm about to start talking. So I can line it up perfectly like so. And then what I can do is I go over to the split button here and click that. And then what I like to do is just select that video and then I go to the trash can and delete the beginning part. So it starts right there and I can scroll to the next part where I finish talking. There we go. And then I can click on the video again, click the split button and delete the ending that I don't want. If you wanna trim something out the middle of a clip, you just have to make two splits. For example, maybe I don't wanna show this comb uh, in my video. So I can scroll back to right before I show it. I can click the split button I can scroll ahead a bit to where uh, it ends and I can click the split button again. And now this clip is segregated from the beginning and the ending there. And I can just click the delete button and I have now deleted something in the middle of a video clip. But if I make a mistake and actually delete something that I did wanna keep, you can always go down to this back button on the bottom left section. And by clicking that, you can actually reverse actions. So now I've reversed that trim and we now have that comb back in our timeline. If you wanna rearrange your clips, all you have to do is select the video that you wanna rearrange and you're gonna drag it all the way up to this big timeline here. And you can actually drag through your timeline and move that clip. So I'm gonna move it over here and then I can just kind of come down with the video clip. So I'll just line it there, come down, and I can hover it over here until I see myself in between the video clips, and I can let go, and now I've rearranged that clip. 
And with those basics out of the way, let's get into adding other elements to our project. If you want to add music inside of DaVinci Resolve for iPad, you're going to have to get it from a third party source because DaVinci Resolve doesn't have any music built in. I recommend using Epidemic Sound, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. Epidemic Sound is a music subscription site that gives you access to restriction-free music and sound effects that is safe to use in your videos. And that's because Epidemic Sound works with their own artists and producers so they own all the rights to the music. So let me walk you through how adding music in DaVinci Resolve works. So the first thing I do is I go to browse and I sort by genres, which they have a whole bunch of different ones from beats to even like film music that you could use in like a cinematic video. Since I'm doing a YouTube video, I'm gonna go with the beats section. And then in here, I can actually choose the mood of the music, whether I want it laid back or I want a dark beat or something more relaxing, which is probably what I want for a YouTube video. But I can even sort this further. I could do old school hip hop or alternative hip hop or smooth jazz. I can also sort by the duration of the song, beats per minute, whether it has vocals in it or not. So you can really find the right song for your project. All right, so I found the song I want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add it to a playlist so I can come back to this later. I'm just gonna add it to my YouTube background music playlist. And then I'm also gonna just click the download button here, click download. And then you just gotta make sure to click download on the bottom of your web browser so it downloads it into your files app on your iPad. Then inside of DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna go right up to this button here and then we're gonna import media from our files. And then adding it to your project is easy enough. You just drag it in. Um, I just put it a little bit ahead just cause it's a little glitchy there. So I just move the music a little ways ahead in front and then I'll just drag it back so it lines up right when my project starts. If you're interested in checking out Epidemic Sound, you can actually get a 30 day free trial if you click my link down below in the description. Any music you use during that free trial period, you have the rights to use on YouTube, even if you don't keep a subscription after the trial period. So it's definitely worth checking out. Now on the topic of audio, one thing we'll probably have to change is the volume of our music. So let's actually just get into audio settings as well as video settings. So with our audio selected, all we have to do is click the inspector tab. And if we click on this, we're gonna get all our audio settings. So probably the first thing we we'll wanna do is make sure our volume's turned down. I usually find for my videos around negative 30 dB is about the, the right uh, height for my music. But you're gonna get a whole bunch of other settings in here too, like the pan, the pitch. There's an equalizer in here if you wanna get fancy into those audio settings. And it's also the same with video. If we actually click on the video clip up here, what we'll actually get access to is all the video settings here. So whether we want a zoom, the position of the video, we can affect all that. You're gonna find things in here like speed change. If you wanna speed it up or slow it down, stabilization, lens correction, all that's gonna be in this inspector tool. In here, you'll also find the volume for your video and all those audio settings for your video. Um, and then as well, some other things, if you apply like a transition or an effect later, you can control that in here. Um, you can also do a quick access of your video settings by clicking on this little adjustment tab right underneath the video. So if I click on this, and for example, I could click on this here, which adjusts the size of the video. So if I wanted to do a crop in on this, I could just increase the size, I could drag it over, and now my video is cropped in. There's a few other ones here you can adjust real quick, like this is the volume, quick access to the volume, get quick access to adjusting the speed settings here, uh, but it's not as detailed. It's much more detailed if you open up the inspector tool, but it's great if you're doing like a quick crop or something like that. But now let's hop into adding more stuff to this project. Now in the top left section, we have our media section. This is where we are able to add videos and music and stuff like that. If we wanted to add like PNG photos or stickers, we could also import them here. Um, the next section that's important for a beginner is this transition section. So here we can go through the transitions and be able to just drag and drop them. Uh, because I have a mouse hooked up, I can actually preview what that transition will look like if I add it. So here's a cross dissolve. I'm probably just gonna click this one. And we'll just drop it right over the top of our video there. You can also just grab it uh, with your finger there and extend it or shorten it. You have all that control there. You can also go in the inspector tool and adjust the settings you know, very specifically in here if you wanna do so. Right after the transition section is the title section. And up here, we're able to add text to our project. So there's a whole bunch of different ones we can click through in here. So for example, we'll just drag the custom text into our project here. If we click ahead here, you'll see the text is on screen. 
Um, again, I'll click the inspector tool to get to the settings. And here I can change the text title, as well as the font, color, size. You'll have all these customizations in here for your text. You can also go over to the settings section and be able to resize it. I find that to be really difficult. Uh, sometimes these specific stuff is just a pain. Uh, so I'm just actually, if I wanna resize text, I go down to settings here and I click on the crop thing and then I'll just use my fingers and I can readjust the size, move it around the screen, and I'll do something like that for my text. And on a quick note as well, you can actually add transitions to your text as well. So if I wanna cross dissolve for the text, just so it fades in, I can add that. So now when I click the play button here, we'll see the it, it fades onto screen. And then moving on, we do have right after titles, the effects section. And in here, you're gonna find a whole bunch of interesting effects. Now, as you can see, DaVinci Resolve Studio is required, at least for this effect here. So if you're thinking about being a pro user, you're gonna get access to features like noise reduction, speed warp, uh, magic mask, voice isolation. So a lot of advanced effects, even some tracking stuff. Um, if you purchase the full version, but it looks like the majority of the editor here you can use for free and be able to make projects without getting, you know, super advanced or anything like that. Also under the effects tab, you're gonna find things like audio effects if you wanna use those to get cool things, as well as generators, which is usually like backgrounds, like here's a paper background, uh, here's this background here. So you do have access to some of those things there. Now, one thing we'll wanna do in the effects section before we get to color grading is adding an adjustment clip. So what we can do is we'll add this and drag it in and drop it down. And what the adjustment clip does, if you're not aware, is you could color grade your adjustment clip and drag it over all the clips you wanna color grade. So instead of having to color grade one video and then another video and do the exact same changes for every single video, you can just apply it to this clip. And as long as this is hovering above the video or is an overlay above the video, you'll be able to have that effect applied to everything. Super useful. So the way I can extend this for my full project, I'm just gonna grab the trim option here on the side. And instead of just dragging it like this, I'm just gonna go up to this top timeline area. Watch my mouse. See how it just jumped ahead? Cause I grabbed up here so I can actually drag all as far as I want through my entire project all the way till the end um, and then let go here and then I can just do the little bit last there so it extends for my entire project you can see the big blue line going across so I'm gonna select my adjustment clip and then on the bottom here we're gonna click this section this is the color section so you got the editing section and the color section where we can apply the color grade now I'm not gonna go super in depth into color grading because that needs to be an entire video for itself. So be sure to subscribe to this channel as I'll be doing a color grading tutorial as well as other advanced editing tips in this. So if you really wanna master DaVinci Resolve, make sure you subscribe to this channel. But let me at least show you the basics so that way you can at least do some basic color grading here. Uh, so with that adjustment clip selected, what I can do is scroll down here and I can control the shadow. So I can click on this and just raise it or lower it. So if I wanted, I could boost the shadows. I can also control the highlights here um, and be able to mess with those. And I do have my scopes over here. You know, this is also a little bit of an advanced thing, but that can help you as well. You can also control the saturation if I want it to be more saturated. Um, I also have like temperature, contrast here where I can grab these and, you know, cause warmth or if I want it to be a colder temperature. You know, I can do all those adjustments here. But that'll at least get you by to do some very basic stuff like brightening shadows, lowering highlights, adding a little bit more color and saturation to your project. Um, and then in a later video, we'll get a whole lot detailed because if I'm not mistaken, this is the full color grading experience from DaVinci Resolve on a computer put into an iPad. So there's probably a lot to unpack here. Now, once we are done, all we have to do is go to the export section here and we can click that and we can export it how we want. If you don't know what you're doing, H.264 is probably fine, or you can just do YouTube format. That's also fine too. I like to export first and then upload to YouTube later, so I'm not gonna sign in, um, and that is DaVinci Resolve. Now, depending when you're watching this, there could be a DaVinci Resolve playlist right here for you to watch of all the tutorials I've done on DaVinci Resolve. Otherwise, if not, definitely check out Epidemic Sound. That link is down below so you can sign up and get awesome music that's safe to use in your videos. So hope to see you over here when those videos come out.